and welcome to the tech show. What we got coming up this week, Owen? We've got the Gamux DH bike. Oh yeah, for pre-order. And YT, Hope and Laser make some updates. And we tell the industry what bikes people actually want and what they should look like. According to us, anyway. Attention, bike industry. All of your bikes should be coming with these things. Uh, well, according to us cranky presenters, anyway. Well, I'm not. I'm not that cranky, <laughs> and I'm not that old. I'm like, it's just no. a light bit of salt and pepper. That's yeah, all. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but there's some things out there that we think all bikes should basically be coming with these days. I mean, some are there, to be honest. But um, yeah, I think I think actually lots of brands are are listening. So I think. Yeah, we went through a crazy phase of lots of press fit bottom brackets and lots of lots of different bottom bracket standards to the point where there isn't really a standard of standard bottom bracket. But I feel like we are <laughs> moving back to good old fashioned threaded bottom brackets and yeah. they are they are good. And why do we love them over press fit? I mean, simply, when you're threading in cups, it's easier to unthread <laughs> them, just like, versus an interface fit. Okay, so headset tall. is the same in terms of like, you, well, Actually, old headsets used to be the same in terms of you'd have cups which you'd press in, but you didn't change them that often and you could replace the bearings. Well, with a modern mm. or a newer integrated um, external bottom bracket, you can't replace the bearings inside. Okay, there's some aftermarket ones which you can. Um, and in so, my yeah. experience, I feel like that sort of external bearings, they give it a little bit more space, be a bit bigger, a bit more reliable, and you don't get that creakiness if you fitted it wrong. Yeah, That's which sure. and, and there's lots of kind of ways of yeah, with a threaded bottom bracket, there's more kind of ways that you can kind of like alter that setup. You're mm. kind of like changing the spacing to play with the chain line. But there's also this T47, which feels like it's new, but isn't really new because I feel like it's been around almost a decade. Okay, I feel like the keyboard yourself. warriors will get back to me. Essentially, some smaller bike brands wanted to be able to use the cooler, newer bottom brackets with a 30 mil spindle. And you can do that with a, a BSA threaded, but it's kind of a bit tricky and you end up with a bearing that's kind of small. So a T47 is a really big threaded bottom bracket. And it's really good because you get all the advantages of a threaded bottom bracket and you get all the advantages of the bigger bearings that you would get with some of the press fit BB30 stuff. So mm. yeah, it's out there. Oh, I'm with you on that as a small rider or a fellow small rider, I should say. I'm definitely on board with that. Another thing, talking about small riders, is space for a water bowl. And in some brands, this isn't even an issue for small riders. There are some brands out there that just you don't you can't put a water bottle on your bike, even if you're a large. And yeah. I think that's just crazy. How are we talking about this in well, this day I th and age? I think because we wanted suspension kinematics to be perfect. Yeah and Camelback came out, and Camelbacks are awesome. So for a lot of people, yeah, you almost true. don't need it. That's true. But I, you know, I kind of like a bottle just to put bits and bobs in, to be yeah. fair, and then, but more brands do. are doing it though. So, or Bay Always, you can fit two bottles in. Yeah, the, you can fit two my bottles new Luxel T the, there you go, yeah. is an extra small, and that's getting two water bottles in there. It's that I mean, 29, 29 as well? Yeah. Wow. The shock placement uh, is, is very helpful. Um, but on a similar subject, tall storage as well. And I think this is my XC roots coming in here because I want two water bottles for marathon. If I'm doing long distance, I want two water bottles. I don't want to be a, carrying a massive camelback for marathon. I do for enduro, but not for marathon. Um, and then tall storage, onboard tall storage should just be on every single bike. And certainly for XC, I know, you know, it's nice to have a nice simple looking XC bike that doesn't have a load of stuff over it, but if you're getting a pump on there and you know you puncture repair and your tools, everything is on there, then that's more pocket space in the back for yeah, food, yeah, yeah, which definitely. is what you yeah. should be having on long bike rides. I mean, thankfully people like, I mean, lots of brands are now integrating that. I think that's with your with your new Lux Trail. It's got yeah. loads of integration. Um, tools coming out Which is brill. Yeah, yeah. Literally, there is yeah. stuff in its uh, but that's <laughs> end perfect. Plans. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's really good. Um, I think you can, like Topeak have done it for a while, like the Ninja Tool setup, yes. and they, so it's a little tool that fits in a little case that fits on the end of the bottom bottle cage. But what's great is that you can also fit it in other parts of the of the bike too. So that you don't have to strap stuff on. But I'm the same, like even on my all road bike, which we'll get into the naming of that in a separate <laughs> time. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got full tools on there because I don't want to get stuck either on the way to work or on a gravel ride without 
all the stuff that mm. I can fix my bike. Yeah, you're right. And I'm lucky enough to have a few bikes. So, and I don't want to have three sets of tools every time I go out for a ride. So, um, having them already on the bike or having something like the Topeak system, maybe yep. with a um, camelback where you can transfer everything, I guess is kind of handy yeah. um, as much as onboard storage. And in those things that you would carry with you, and it's something I talk to loads of people about out on the trails, and it always feels like a head scratcher of like, why haven't you not got that? And that's like, for me, it's always a chain tool. Loads of people don't okay, have chain yeah, tools, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I ain't gonna fix anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also is is mech hangers, and it used to be that you'd have to ha like it was a nightmare to find out what mech hanger you had. Oh, As in, we're talking about the about little it. tab that bolts into what well, used to be covered by at least back in the day, but now bolts onto your rear axle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, SRAM has now got UDH, which okay was a slight backdoor into a whole new drivetrain system. Thank yeah. you, SRAM. But it did unify. <laughs> hordes and hordes and hordes of brands onto one definable system that's really, really good. So you've yeah. got one that works. I mean, I do remember the days of walking into a bike shop and looking at a poster and trying to work out which silhouette I had that attached my derailleur to my frame. So yeah, I'm on board with every bike coming with UDH because um, you don't have to stick with SRAM on UDH, do you? So no, no, you don't. It's just but a it's great a, Yeah, invention. it's a very good system. So yeah, thank you. Well done. Yeah. Um, what about cable routing? Shall we go full ex external? I know you're a big fan of it. <laughs> I think external's got its place. I think the thing is, it's moving so fast that now with like T-type drivetrain and, well, old access, yeah. Mm. I think what... is, is, yeah, it, yeah, it'd be nice, but actually some of the internal systems are so good. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. So um, It gets a bad rap, but some of it is genuinely brilliant. Yeah, so I ran a Kotic Flare Max for a year, many years ago. Um, I rode that in the Alps, I was guiding with it, um, it went to Canada with me, did a lot of stuff. Um, and so it had proper use. And external was nice, don't get me wrong, but it did clog a lot of mud. And it was a pain in the butt to clean because yeah, yeah. there's more cables on the outside of your frame. Um, and then also I had like these sort of, I kept cutting the inside of my legs from like rubbing on the little like grippy things. So there are some annoyances to that. Um, I gotta say the internal tubes that you can just thread cables through. Yep. Like I built a salsa for a Shimano video last year and you just literally do that and it comes out the top and it's like, oh wow. That's yeah, tube and tube is, yeah. Should be like. Yeah. But um, anyway, should we ask the viewers? Um, yeah, guys, definitely. what should every single bike be coming with uh, these days? Should it be onboard tools or should it be uh, UDHs? Is there something that we've completely forgotten that should be coming on every bike? Let us know down in the comments below. Okay, the Gamak Sago downhill bike that we've all been lusting over on the tech show and GMBN, to be fair, is now ready for pre-order. Um, it is out there and you can buy it. Uh, so after three years of testing it and racing it on the UCI World Cup downhill scene, uh, it's there. You've got the C1.6 pinion gearbox on this downhill bike, which is fully CNC machined from Alloy. Um, it's also belt driven and you can have it with uh, Smart Shift or without Smart Shift. It's up to you. Um, and you can build this as frame only, or you can have a fully build kit option, which will be the team version, which is what you're okay, looking yeah, at yeah. right now, which is the Mana 2 version, what they have been racing in the UCI, or you can have it as an Olin's build. Um, and you can have it 29 uh, or mixed wheels, and this is for a full 200 millimeter front and rear. Um, and external cable routing, Owen. Well, yeah, and pinion gearbox. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. like the little we secret surprise. That, didn't yeah, we? but it's yeah. So pinion gearbox mm. uh, DH bike. I mean, I feel like we, it's a DH bike, but is there a? I'm sure you could put a dropper post on there. Are they oh, going to do see that? That's a pretty straight up dropper post. Yeah, isn't it? can it be but like a super a enduro one. with 200 mil of travel? Oh, can sure, you people imagine? will comment on that. Yeah. yeah, that would be a big old bike. Super though. duper enduro. What's the um, name? Mega enduro? Ooh. Mega super enduro? Who Maybe knows? That's been Leave taken. your answers in the comments below. Yeah, that looks super. <laughs> Uh, and excitingly, kind of polar opposite to a degree yes. from this super high-end high-tech, not to say that the next bike is not high-tech, it is, it's just different materials, is a new Pace hardtail. So we had the RC429, which is the really cool flat bar gravel drop bar mountain bike Thing. crossover, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Which we love, yeah. Yeah. Now there's a long travel hardtail, which is the RC529. Um, 
So it's slacker than the old version. It's for 140, 150 fork, um, sort of enduro geometry. So 64, wow, 64 and a half degree head angle, 77 degree seat angle, which is very steep. Uh, and you can run it as 29 or mixed wheel size. That's very cool. Yeah, she's a big hit in enduro hardtail. Yeah. Bring back the hardcore hardtail, I say. Well, it hasn't gone away. Uh, no, there you go. It's Pace never is died. There. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so Hope have made a couple of interesting updates to some of their existing lineup. So if you're familiar with the XCR, the well, the cross-country brakes, uh, they're now available in all of those lovely six Hope colours, which they didn't oh, cool. beforehand. Also, they've revised, well, they've created a downhill version of their Pro 5 Hub as well. Uh, so what they're saying is that they've reworked the Pro 5 Hub to be designed to work specifically with a seven-speed cassette. Nice. So as you've got um, a little bit more space in the back, they've been able to increase the flanges to sort of fill that space. So you've now got a more robust shell effectively. Although I think you can build it up with an 11 speed potentially if you want a super robust wheel. But it also means that your um, spacing for your uh, spokes is a bit more rigid. Yeah, I feel say. like there's better Stunst. triangulation for, yeah. the, for the spokes, which is pretty cool. I feel like when they did their, their first bike, that had like a 130 back end. So mm. old, old mountain bike standard. Um, to make the Q factor and everything quite narrow. So they hope are not, yeah. it's not their first roll of the dice in kind of doing fun stuff. But um, yeah, no, will we see not. Grandad win Hardline with this hub? Oh. That'd be pretty cool. Is he, Adam Brayton. Is he in? Yeah. Is he? He oh, will that's be. Exciting. Yeah, so there we go. Trees he'll knock down this year. <laughs> Watch this space. Cool. Um, next up, we've got some new entry level helmets from Laser um, the Lupo and the Finch. Mm -hmm. uh, which by itself is probably not that exciting, but what's interesting is that they're both five-star rated. So I think that rating is from, I want to say, Virginia Tech, he says. Yeah, yes, um, right. So yeah, their standard or testing protocol is it's quite interesting in itself, actually probably like a video or like several videos in one to talk about mm. that. Um, but it's got its own rotational protection system. I have to be careful about not calling it something else that it's not. Uh, effectively, it'll help it slide or your the helmet slide a little bit and protect your brain because your brain slides around in your skull or should do. Um, laser call there's kinetic core and I think it's lots of sort of small filaments of the, the shell, the EPS shell. Um, Oh yeah, and they've got them designed specifically for smaller heads, so that's yeah. also good. So the Lupo is the standard and the Finch is for smaller heads, so effectively resizing it properly so that you don't get all the bulk. So nice. it's not a big helmet scale Not a big down. mushroom helmet. So that's always nice for us smaller heads. Um, new from YT, a little bit of an update, only a minor one. Uh, so the Capra is, as we know it, is not changed, but they've added the Core 5, which is a bit more of what they call a hard-hitting build. So you've got double-down Maxxis tyres, you've got SRAM XO transmission, because we all know how many people can stand on one of those, so that's yeah, obviously hard-hitting. Yeah. Uh, Crank Brothers Synthesis Enduro Alloy, and then Industry 9 uh, 1 1 hubs as well. And then Olin's, of course, so you've got the TTX uh, Mark II uh, with that new sort of bo bottom out bumper um, okay, yep. and also the RXF 38s on the front there. So uh, mixed wheel or 29er now available. Very cool. We mispronounced Harrow as Harrow oh. instead of Haro, apparently, or Harrow. Oh, really? I've always yeah. said Haro, but I've no oh, idea. You said Haro. Yeah, yeah, I've okay, no I idea said whether that's correct or yeah, not. Yeah, me and Neil got it wrong, apparently. Idiots. No, I know, we're just not BMX hardcores. <laughs> Sorry about that. BMX Surprised fans. of you two. Actually. I know, yeah, I know. We can do skids and wheelies, but yeah. Well, what was your moment. question? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so they started their business, Bob yeah. started his business in 1978, and what was their first product? Uh, we've got 13 winners. We do indeed. So uh, Joe MTV, or Joel, sorry, MTV, um, yours is probably the, the best answer. So Haro's first product was number plates for BMX racing bikes. Indeed it was. And he added that it was actually a Preston Petty motocross plate uh, with custom decals. And you were absolutely spot on right. That is exactly what he sold as yeah, his first sure. product. Um, I expected loads of people to say that BMX bikes was their first product. Uh, and you'd be wrong. Only one person mentioned that, and all 13 of you now on the screen got the correct answer. So well done, well you done, guys. Yeah. I um, murdered me. So my question for you now is, what does specialised SWAT stand for? S-W-A-T. What does it stand for? Uh, bo bonus point, if you know, when that was first released. 
Right, bike cave. Yeah, bike cave. This is exciting. It's always exciting to snoop into people's houses, and today it's uh, I've got a double whammy from uh, America. Uh, always good. Yeah, so what we've got here is Zach from New Jersey. Um, probably hate me for saying it that way, uh, but he's got his little space here. And what I like about this, uh, I mean, I'm super jealous of the amount of space he's actually got. Look at the size of that. You're saying little space. That's his not little a little space. space. Cavernous. But what you might have not noticed is this is actually just old plastic shelving that he's turned on its side and it makes a, a bike rack. Jeez, so I good. think that's really clever. I love that. Yeah, really good space. Good lighting as well. That's always nice to see. I know. Love a wooden door as well. Um, and then my next one is uh, across the water in Tyrol, Italy from... Um, Haynes, Hannes, oh, I might be pronouncing that I say Hannes, Hannes. Hannes, yeah. Yep. I apologise. Okay. Uh, whose description just says bike, skis, workspace. I mean, that is exactly what we've got here is yeah. bike, skis and workspace. Um, I wonder if you've ever been tempted to build a snow bike, uh, Hannes. Let us know. Uh, maybe a future top mod for you there. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe he's just happy on skis. Maybe. Doesn't need the bike, bit. I'd be happy just on a bike. <laughs> Okay, comments from last week, and you and the Don were talking about heavy and light bikes, how things got heavier. Uh, is that a bad thing? Do we like it? Uh, my first comment here from Bankboy21, who says, uh, bikes are too heavy. That was it. Man well, of I many mean, words. <laughs> I think he's got a point there. I think that was our conclusion as well. If you've that's got a downhill it. bike that's the same weight as an enduro bike, something's slightly yeah. awry. Uh, Banana says, I love how light my bike feels beneath me, but being 265 pounds means I break light stuff easily. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Unfortunately, there's a trade off. There it? is always a trade off, so yeah. Lopon says, super like XC bike, heavy downhill. Ooh, controversial. He's gone it in is. both directions yeah. for uh, two no, different very genres. Good. Very good point, though. Uh, Mike Phillips, he's got a 15 kg trail bike which he takes to bike parks. He puts on DH inner tubes. I think I've heard of those inner tubes. Yeah, I And use DH casings. <laughs> uh, had around a kilo to the rear wheel, but he couldn't tell the difference. Uh, I mean, if it's really steep and you're not accelerating out of corners, then no, the extra mass is great. Oh. And DHK casing tire and a DH You're tube. saying You're not DH cake it. now. Am I, I want some DH cake. You can get so, it. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, tip for Dense, you. Dense, heavy cake. DH casing 26 at inner tube is, if you're going to have one inner tube as a spare in your backpack, you have that because that really? fits everything. Does it? Yeah, because it's so thick, like it would just expand. Will it? Uh, okay, that's a video, a video coming up there. soon. <laughs> uh, speaking of videos, things we're looking forward to this weekend. Um, oh, it's a double me. Uh, apologies right, for that. There Sorry, you go. Look out. Uh, you've obviously been busy last week. Um, so three ways to get your your saddle height correct. So I explore three different ways that you can maths. do it, and some, there is some maths. Greg but I use a yes, I do. I use Le Monde method, um, and also seven maintenance skills that every rider should have. Very good. Um, absolute basics that everyone should be able to do. So um, if I can do it, I'm sure you can. <laughs> uh, but that's all we've got time for. So thanks for stopping by and hopefully see you next week. Bye.